It may be difficult for laboratories on campus to determine if the chemical waste that they produce is hazardous. The regulations may be very time consuming to review for each waste stream. In order to take the guesswork out of disposal and ensure that our landfills do not end up full of laboratory reagents, our campus policy is, if it's a chemical, dispose of it as hazardous waste. This approach lets Environment Health and Safety, or EHS, decide on the proper disposal of chemicals. Hazardous waste management can be very simple if you know what to do. When you are dealing with chemicals, waste minimization is the best option to practice first, and then proper hazardous waste management as the alternative. If you generate less hazardous waste, there will be that much less for you to manage properly. Proper management of hazardous waste begins with knowing what you can and cannot do. Our industrial wastewater permits do not allow for drain disposal of any hazardous chemicals. What you may think is acceptable to drain dispose may actually be against the law. One common misconception is that it's all right to pour diluted alcohol solutions or diluted ethidium bromide solutions down the drain. This is false. Be sure to consult with an EHS representative to ensure that the liquids that you plan to pour down the drain can be done so safely and legally. In this video, we will discuss some of the basic requirements to assist you to manage your hazardous waste correctly. We will teach you how to label, store, and transport your hazardous waste so that campus personnel will be safe and avoid potential fines from regulatory agencies. One of the most common violations that the EPA cites university laboratories on involves improper labeling. Unlabeled chemicals equal unknown hazardous waste which are very expensive to have analyzed. Don't let your chemicals become unknown. To assist with proper and complete labeling, we have a labeling system called the Online Tag Program, or OTP. With this system, each lab can print their hazardous waste tags right from their printer. It is important to be as accurate as possible with the constituents of your waste. This will let the EHS staff know exactly what is in your container so that they can dispose of it safely and properly. Remember, proper labeling ensures your safety and the safety of everyone who can potentially come in contact with your waste. Special packing windows are provided by EHS for your convenience. Although they are not required, they can hold the tags in place while also protecting them from contamination. Rather than entering the amount of waste that you intend to put in the container, the container size is chosen as the maximum amount that the container can hold. This way, hazardous waste labels can be affixed to waste containers at the time that the waste is first added. Liquids or solids can be tagged in the same way, choosing the maximum volume of the waste receptacle as the container size. Proper labeling ensures that everyone knows what is in the waste container at all times and also fulfills the legal requirements associated with proper labeling. If at any time the intended constituents of an accumulating waste stream need to be modified, the tag can easily be updated. Once the tag number is located, you can edit the same tag with the updates. When you are through, simply reprint the tag to reflect the new constituents. Lab cleanouts often involve hundreds of chemicals for disposal. This may apply to labs that are shutting down, moving, or just want to clear out extra chemicals. Tagging each chemical with the online tag program waste tags can be extremely time consuming for this type of situation. To keep compliant with hazardous waste regulations but make the process as streamlined as possible, we have developed the lab cleanout form. 
As a general rule, this form would be used for 50 chemicals or more. With the lab cleanout form, you can list all of the chemicals that you have for disposal and submit it by email to EHNS for review. Be sure to contact EHNS for assistance in deciding the right method for your lab. In some cases, departments may not have the laboratory staff or time to properly label their lab cleanout waste. EHNF staff can be hired at an hourly rate to label and segregate the waste for you. Once the waste is labeled properly, the next thing that you need to know is how to store the waste appropriately. Proper storage of hazardous waste begins at the time it becomes waste. Hazardous waste must be in secondary containment at all times. Plastic tubs can be used to store multiple waste containers, provided that the waste is compatible with one another. If you have incompatible waste, you must segregate the containers from one another by placing them in separate secondary containment. Some examples of incompatible wastes are acids and bases, oxidizers and flammables, water reactive and aqueous chemicals, and cyanides and acids. Proper storage also means that you do not store your waste for over 90 days. You should dispose of your waste as soon as you finish a particular experiment, when the container is full, or if the waste is approaching 90 days or one university quarter. When it is time to dispose of your hazardous waste, it is important to transport it safely to the pickup location. Even if the amount of waste is small and can be easily carried, you should always use a stable cart to transport it. Be sure to continue to use secondary containment while transporting your hazardous waste to the pickup location as it is required at all times. Avoid stockpiling because overloaded carts can be dangerous and will take a long time for the EHS staff to offload. Each hazardous waste pickup goes on for a specified length of time. Arrive at the pickup with plenty of time for the waste to be offloaded safely. Bringing your waste on a routine basis will make for a smooth and easy experience for everyone involved. Each building has a designated pickup location specified. Be sure to check with the hazardous waste pickup schedule to make sure that you have the right location and time. The hazardous waste pickups are designed for routinely generated wastes. Do not bring lab cleanout waste to these pickup locations. EHS will arrange a special pickup for such wastes. It is forbidden to cross streets or transport hazardous waste along sidewalks, so be sure to contact EHS if you think that you may need to do this. We can tell you the correct and safest route to transport your waste to the pickup location. In case of a spill in your lab or while transporting waste to the pickup location, it is important that you take the following steps to ensure everyone's safety. Immediately following the spill, you should take a quick assessment. Determine what material spilled, how much, and where the spill occurred. If you need to evacuate the area, do so but make sure that you warn others in the process. A sign or verbal warning may prevent others from becoming contaminated or injured by the spill. If anyone is injured, including yourself, caring for that person is the first priority. Seek an eye wash or safety shower if needed and medical attention where appropriate. If the spill is spreading, do your best to contain it so that it does not get into the drains or other areas that could cause a problem. If you're on campus, you can report the spill to EHS by calling 59797 and trained hazmat team members will assist you. If it is an emergency, you can also call 911 from a campus phone 24 hours a day to reach the UC Police Department. They will make sure that you get the help you need. If you are calling from a cell phone, call 310-825-1491 to reach the UC Police Department for emergency assistance.
By following these simple steps, you will be able to handle a spill in the safest way possible. While this video may be educational, it does not serve to meet the training requirements for hazardous waste generators. Any person that generates or handles hazardous waste is required to attend hazardous waste training on an annual basis. Be sure to contact EHS for any questions that you have, and one of our staff will be happy to assist you. You can also visit our website at www.ehs.ucla.edu for training and more information. Remember, at UCLA, if it is a chemical, dispose of it as hazardous waste.